Pets.com. To me, that name sounds so bland and ordinary. It doesn't sound like I'm going to be talking about anything special here, but you're going to have to trust me on this one. I think it's an amazing story. It captures a time in American history, and it serves as a cautionary tale for any investors or business owners. They were an online retailer of pet supplies, just like it sounds, but there was nothing typical about them. Back around the year 2000, Pets.com was making their impact on the world. Here's a word you don't hear often, but they had the spokes puppet. It was an adorable little dog holding a microphone, and he was amazingly popular. He was making his way around the talk show circuit. In 1999, he appeared as one of those massive balloons in Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. A few months later, he appeared in a high-profile Super Bowl commercial. Believe it or not, he was involved in a lawsuit with Conan O'Brien and Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. The Pets.com puppet, I guess, is suing... Triumph by saying that the Pets.com puppet ripped Triumph off. Is that right? Yeah, I don't know why, but it turns out people loved dog puppets that held microphones back then. That friendly mascot will forever be how the general public most remembers Pets.com, but in the business world, they're remembered for much more negative reasons. The reason most people watching this probably don't really remember Pets.com is because they haven't existed for decades and they didn't exist for long. This is actually one of the quickest rises and falls of any major company. I challenge anyone to find one this big where it all happened this fast. They went from not existing to a public phenomenon to shutting down all within about a two year span. On the stock market, they had their initial public offering in February of 2000, selling their shares for $11 each. And by November of that same year, it was trading for 22 cents when they announced that it was all over. So today, I wanna talk about what the heck happened here? How did they grow so fast and where did things go wrong over at Pets.com? The first reason behind their failure and is really at the core of all of it, I'm gonna call a deceptively promising market. This goes along with the whole dot-com bubble that was forming at the time. Pets.com is actually considered to be a prime example of what was happening. In short, in the late 1990s, internet use was growing at a tremendous rate. It was thought to be the way of the future, which was kind of true, but people were getting a little too excited about it. Seemingly, if a company had anything to do with the internet, people would not hesitate to invest absurd amounts of money in it. The result was all of these inflated stock prices. I'm talking about companies valued at billions of dollars without the foundation to back it up. Well, in the early 2000s, the bubble finally burst, the whole stock market was affected, and as I said, Pets.com is a great example of this. The majority of the country owned a pet, and those people are always going to be buying more and more pet supplies. It was estimated to be a $23 billion market at the time, and the mentality was that if the internet is the future, a good part of that $23 billion would soon be coming from online orders. Do you see what I mean? Everyone thought that this online pet supply market was about to explode, so many investors felt that it was a good place to invest. The actual domain name of Pets.com was bought in 1994 and used as a website where pet owners can interact with each other. Beyond that, there wasn't much happening with it. 1998 is considered to be the true start of the business. That's the year they started selling pet supplies, and because this was the highly sought after pets.com domain, you know, it's just the basic word, nothing else involved to complicate things, it attracted some investors. Those investors brought in Julie Wainwright to run the company because she had experience in e-commerce. She was the former CEO of an online movie retailer named Real.com, and possibly the biggest break was the fact that Julie already had a professional relationship with Jeff Bezos, the head of Amazon and was able to convince him to purchase about half of Pets.com. Amazon wanted it because this was one of their early attempts to expand their offerings beyond books and media. In the words of Jeff Bezos, giving customers anything they might want to find online. So Amazon invested something like $60 million and before their IPO on the stock market, they had raised another $50 million in private funding, then that IPO raised an additional $82 million. They were receiving millions of dollars from all of these different sources and based on what? That ties into my next reason, which is the fact that this entire thing was incredibly rushed. You can see how fast this was all happening, and over that short time, I can't imagine Amazon or anyone else was conducting much market research. This was like blindly jumping into a pool without checking the temperature first. The big unanswered question was whether or not people would be receptive to an online pet supplies retailer. Did people like their trip to the pet store? The stuff is typically available at their local supermarket 
and if they're going there anyway, is the internet really more convenient? Are people willing to wait days to receive their items, or do they need them right away? Wouldn't you agree that these are all things that you might want to figure out before investing millions of dollars? But you see, there was no time. They thought that this market might be about to explode, and they were operating on the you snooze, you lose principle. Like with many of these internet companies at the time, it was all a big gamble. Huge investments based on very little data. But the fact is, they did have all this money to work with, which kind of gave them a head start. But their operations were a disaster for four reasons. First off, they generally set their prices simply too low. Products like pet food, especially back then, weren't too different from each other, and they typically didn't have the best margins. What I'm saying is, it was hard for any retailer to sell it for much more than they bought it for. Then, to complicate things, it was an emerging industry, so they had all these similar online competitors to deal with that would compete based on price and variety. Pets.com sold 15,000 different items at their peak, which was far more than any of their direct competitors. Squeaky toys, new collars, leashes. Having so many stock keeping units can make things harder to scale and lead to even worse margins. After they ran their sales or coupon codes or whatever promotions they were running, there wasn't much profit remaining. Second would be the shipping costs. They famously offered shipping of any product to anywhere in the country for $4.95. But again, things were more complicated because in the beginning, they shipped everything from a single warehouse in San Francisco, which isn't exactly in the center of the country. And they were selling some of the heaviest, most costly items to ship that you can imagine. Do you know how much it cost to ship a 30 pound bag of dog food clear across the country? It was more than $5. And after they accounted for the promotions and shipping, they were actually losing money on many of the items that they sold. In addition, they had to deal with the technology costs. This right here is pretty much the main reason that Julie Wainwright believes that they failed. I can't say I understand the specifics of it, but I suppose the technology wasn't there at the time where you can run an e-commerce business to this size in a cost-effective way. When you compare it to today, crazy amounts of money had to be spent on things like servers and employing IT professionals. And as if all of that wasn't enough, it doesn't even account for their advertising costs, which were also through the roof. I mentioned how their spokes puppet would probably be the thing that's most remembered about them. They hired this ad agency to create him, who happened to be the same one behind that Taco Bell dog. He was then voiced by comedian Michael Ian Black and given the admittedly funny tagline, because pets can't drive. That was all good, but I think the real reason he's so remembered is because they spent so much money promoting him. My goodness, I mentioned that balloon in the Macy's parade that cost an estimated $200,000. The Super Bowl ad, you may know that that's some of the most expensive advertising available. It was an estimated $2.2 million for a 30 second commercial. The efforts were a success as far as getting the brand out there, but they weren't nearly as successful in translating that awareness into actual sales. Their expenses were simply out of control, and I have to think the reasoning behind it was that if they just kept pushing forward, they would outlast the competitors and the market would grow big enough for them to become profitable. They even managed to buy one of their main competitors, the very differently named PetStore.com for over $10 million. But the plan didn't work. With all of these issues, they never made any money. In the first nine months of 2000, leading up to their collapse, they reported a loss of $147 million, despite increasing revenues. Then, in November of that year, once their stock had become almost worthless, along with many other dot-com companies, they announced that they would be shutting down. They didn't declare bankruptcy. They instead sold all of the assets they could and gave the money to their investors. Notably, they sold their famous domain name to PetSmart, who to my knowledge still owns it, but has not done anything with it. Today it just redirects you to PetSmart.com. And they sold the rights to their spokes puppet. They sold it for $125,000 to Bar None, who specializes in providing auto loans to people with bad credit. It seems kind of random, but their slogan became, everybody deserves a second chance. I'm not sure if it was intended or not, but it does apply nicely to the spokes puppet himself. I'm sorry, I just like saying spokes puppet. It, I don't often get the opportunity. That's the amazingly brief yet eventful history of Pets.com. I think we can summarize it by saying that they failed because they never should have existed in the first place. Not at this scale. The market simply wasn't there yet. They were ahead of their time, but didn't realize it. And yes, they should have taken the time to figure that out and made plenty of other mistakes, but they truly were fighting an uphill battle. To me, this was like putting a video game on hard mode before you even know how to 
play it. They were doing all of this when most people weren't even on the internet, let alone using it to buy their pet supplies. The more recent, more methodical, more successful version of Pets.com would be Chewy.com, who I think has proven that the market for an online retailer of pet supplies now exists and is much more doable. Let me know in the comments, do you remember Pets.com? Or I have to imagine this is a very select few, but were you one of their customers? Or even an investor? I'd be very interested in hearing any experience you've had with them. For me, I was only nine years old when they went out of business, so I was too young for any of that, but I do recognize seeing their spokes puppet. I promise, that's the last time I'm gonna say it. And where would you say things went wrong for them? Were they doomed from the start, or was there a way that they could have made it work? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Pets.com, because pets can't drive. Thank you for watching.